everyone, it's Justin again. Up to this point, we've transformed the absolute value graph by focusing on one transformation at a time. In this video, we're going to learn how to combine all the transformations together. When graphing a transformed function, it can be easier to perform some translations before others. First, you should find h so you know how far the vertex should move to the right or left. Then find k and move the vertex up or down the appropriate distance. Next, you're going to want to know the orientation of the graph, right side up or upside down. So identify whether the multiplier is positive or negative. And finally, use the multiplier's value to apply the transformed slope and draw the function's graph. Let's try this example. The steps have been abbreviated in the top left corner to help us out. In case we also need help telling which variable is which, here's the general formula for absolute value functions. Remember, before any transformations, the regular absolute value function looks like this. For the first couple steps, we're only worried about the vertex. So let's ignore everything else for now. First, where is h? h is right here, but be careful. Remember, h is being subtracted. So that plus 1 is actually minus negative 1. The vertex will move one unit to the left. Next, we need k, which is right here at the end. The variable is always exactly how it looks. So positive 3 means the vertex will move up 3 units. Now we found where the vertex will be. So the next step is finding out whether or not the absolute value is right side up or upside down. Because the sign on the multiplier is negative, this graph will be reflected upside down. And finally, the value of the multiplier changes the slope. Instead of a slope of 1, this doubles the slope to 2. So on the left side, we rise 2 and run 1. And on the right side, the line has to go down. So this will have a slope that falls 2 and runs 1. This graph matches the function negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 plus 3. You can plug in any input for x and get the same output as in the graph. Finding the function for an absolute value graph is even easier. Just find all the pieces and then plug them in. For this graph, the vertex has moved 2 units to the right, so h is positive 2, and the graph is 1 unit higher than normal, so k is positive 1. The graph hasn't been flipped upside down, so the multiplier will not be negative, and finally, the slope is 1 over 2. By plugging each of these pieces in, we get the function for this graph is 1 half times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1. Pause the video here and see if you can identify the function for this absolute value graph. How do you think you did? Did you remember how to find all the pieces? The vertex is here at negative 3, negative 1. So it's been shifted 3 to the left and 1 down. The absolute value graph is upside down, so the multiplier will be negative. And the slope is 3 over 2. So the function for this graph is negative 3 halves times the absolute value of x plus 3 minus 1. Once you know what all the pieces mean, graphing absolute value functions and writing functions for absolute value graphs are super simple. If you're still struggling a little, make sure to practice. In the next lesson, you're going to learn about some other types of functions that are similar to these, called piecewise functions. See you then!